The Playfair code is an example of a symmetrical encryption polygramic substitution diagram code. All that just makes it sound much harder than it really is. It's really not that difficult. It was developed in 1854 by a guy named Charles Whitstone, but it was used extensively by Lord Playfair, which is why it is called the Playfair Code. Now, what I like about the Playfair Code is that it's easy, relatively speaking, for just a regular person to write down without need of a computer or mathematics of any kind. Yet, it's fiendishly clever, much more so than, say, a Caesar cipher or a Skip cipher. The Playfair Code can be, and we can make variations to it that make it even more fiendishly clever. Yet it's still simple enough that anybody can easily write out a message or decode, encode or decode a message. So how does it work? Well, first you're going to get yourself a, t t a five by five grid. Here we go, five by five grid. And you're going to fill it with the letters of the alphabet. Now there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So we're going to skip, we have to skip a letter. So I skip J. It doesn't matter what letter you skip, but obviously you want to pick a letter that you're not going to use very much. Maybe Z or Q or J. As long as the person to whom you're going to send a code to knows that you're skipping letter J or Q or Z, whichever, then you'll be fine. So pick a letter to skip. Again, I skip J. There we go. So here's my code grid. And we'll use this grid to write down our coded message. Now, if you pick any two letters in the alphabet in the grid, one of three things is going to be true. For instance, if I pick the letters G and R compared to H and K and M and Y, any two letters in the grid one of three things is going to be true. They're either going to be in the same row, in the same column, or they're going to form the corners of a box of some size. So let's look at GR. GR are in the same column. So if I want to encode the letters GR, I find them on the grid. When I discover they're in the same column, what I do is I replace for the coded message the letter that's directly below the letter I'm interested in. So G would become M, and R would become W. If, like HK, the letters are in the same row, then I replace them with the letter that comes to the right of the letter I'm interested in. So H would become I, and K, there is no letter here, so we wrap around, K becomes F. And finally, in the case of M and Y, you can see they form the corners of this box right here. So when letters form the corners of a box, I'm going to replace them with the letter that's horizontally, left and right, on the opposite side of the box. So here's my box. So M becomes O and Y becomes W. M becomes O, Y becomes W. That's going to be O, Y will be W. So that's how it works. There you go. Now you will note that every time we use this, this means we're always encoding two letters at a time. So let us say that I want to send the code meet me at noon. Well, the first thing I will do is I'm going to write my message as just one string of letters with no spaces. So I will write it as M-M-E-A-D-N-O-O-N. So that is the message that I wish to code. Now, I will get my Playfair code grid, and I will begin to code. Now again, we're always coding two letters at a time. So I'm going to start with the first two letters, M and E. And I see there's M, there's E. They form this box right here. So that means that M 
I'm going to use the letters in the opposite corners of the box. M becomes P, and E becomes B. Good. Now I'm going to code the next two letters, ET. There's E, there's T. It forms this box right here. So E becomes D, and T becomes U. Here's M, E again. I already know that that is going to be P, B. Let's look at A, T. There's A and there's T. It forms this box here. So A becomes D and T becomes Q. How about N, O? Well, N, O, they're in the same row. So I use the letter that's just to the right of them. So N becomes O and O becomes P. Similarly then, when I want to encode O, N, O becomes P, and N becomes O. So this is the string of letters that I would send my spy friend, telling them to meet me at noon. Now, what's fiendishly clever about this is you will note that we have several repeated letters here. We have M's and N's and E's and T's. But note that the E's, for instance, are, are encoded with different letters. This E is a B, this E is a D. This T is a U, but this T is a Q. That makes a code very difficult to solve. If I can't know for sure that each letter in my code represents a specific letter in the alphabet, that really increases the difficulty. That's why I like this code. It's easy to write, but it's fiendishly clever. And there are some things we can do to make it even more devilish. You will note that sometimes when I have a double letter, I get a double letter in my code. Not always, but sometimes. Um, we would like to avoid that whenever possible. Okay? So we have a method for that. Let's say that I want to encode the word balloon. B a L L O O N. Okay, there's a few conditions here that we want to just tweak a bit just to make it more fiendish. I'm going to code this two letters at a time. So that means I'll be coding B A L L O O N N. For starters, if I'm ever encoding a string of letters and I don't have an even number of letters, that means my last letter is only going to be one. I need two letters. We throw an X in there. You can throw any letter in there. You want to use a letter X or Q that's rarely used so that when your friend decodes a letter and sees an NX, they know that that's the end of the line. Or they know that there's something, they know that that X doesn't really contribute to the message. It'll be obvious to them when they decode the message. So that's number one. If we're ever lacking a pair of letters, we just fill in the last space with an X. Now, secondly, if I'm ever decoding a, a double digit, this LL, well, if I encode LL, that's just going to be MM. OO is just going to be PP. I don't want a double letter in my message to come out as a double letter in my code. So what we will do in this case is we will just replace the second letter with an X. So this will be LX. This would be OX. This is NX from reason stated above and there. So now, if I wanted to decode the word balloon, I would say, well, there's BA. They're in the same row. So B becomes C. A becomes B. LL, well, I'm going to encode LX. There's L, there's X. So L is N. X is V. Okay. There's OX. O is N, X is Y, and there's N, X. They're in the same column, so I replace N with S, and X, I wrap it up and replace that with C. So the word balloon comes out as C, B, N, V, N, Y, S, C. Again, I, that, that, that's very devilish because... I have two N's that represent an L and an O. The X is represented three times, but it comes out as a V, a Y, and a C. Who would ever know that that spells balloon? 
Now, obviously, anybody would know if they knew what grid you were using and that you were using. So there's something we can do about that too. But before we get into that, okay, that's how the code works. So let me give you a code and we'll see if um, you can decipher it. So here's a code right here. Lovely, a wonderful little code there. I'll just set this right here. So everything fits in the screen. So you send your coded message, meet me at noon, to your spy friend, and they send this in response. So we have to decode it. Now, if you want to pause the video here and try and decode that, that'd be awesome. Okay, let's work on decoding. Now, this is my coded message. So when I go to decode it, if the two letters I'm interested in are in the same row, I'm not gonna go right anymore, I'm gonna back up and go left. I'm gonna undo what the code writer did. So let's look at O, my first two letters are O and P, O, P. So I'm gonna back up, that means O is N and P is O. All right, okay. Let's look at YT. Well, YT are in the same column. Now, when he coded that, he moved down, so I'm gonna move up. So Y is actually T, and this T is actually O. Okay, NP. There's N and there's P. They're in the same row, so I'm gonna to move to the left to decode. So P, or N rather, becomes M and P becomes O. There's SW. Well, this is a box. So when my two letters form a box, I just use, again, the opposite corners of the box. So S would be R, and W would be X. Okay, hmm, that's interesting. To morks. M, Y. Well, here's M and there's Y. It forms this box right here. So M becomes O. Y becomes W. Then we have D, Q. There's D, Q. D becomes A. And Q becomes T. Oh, really? Well, all right. P, O. P, O, they're in the same row, so I'm gonna to move to the left. P becomes O, O becomes N, and finally C, Z. Oh, okay, here we go. So C and Z form this box, C becomes E, and Z becomes X. So my message that was sent back says no, Tomorrow at one. No, tomorrow at one. That X was a filler because it had an odd number of letters. This X was a, a red herring to so I don't did so I didn't tech code a double R. There we go. So there you go. That's how it works. Hopefully you manage that just fine. Now the problem is that if if someone knows you're using the Playfair code and you're using the standard grid like this, and then th they can decode or your messages as easily as the person you're sending them to. So we have a way around that that's fairly easy, but makes it that much more difficult. What you want to do is get your, how do we say in English, um, an empty grid. Get yourself an empty grid. And you don't have to print out a grid like this. You can just, you know, just write the numbers, letters in a grid. But here we go. And you and your friend, you and your spy friend, agree on a word. Now what you're looking for here is, is a, a five, six or more letter word that doesn't have any repeated letters in it. Some examples might be pencil, birthday. That's a good one. That's eight letters, no repeated letters in it. Um, what's another one? Uh, and I don't mean double letters, I mean any repeated letters. 
So, encyclopedia is no good. It's got two E's in it. Um, well, you can think of a word. I like the word lizard. I like to use words that have Z's or X's in them because that will get the Z and the X out of the bottom row and I think it makes it a little trickier that way. So what you and your friend are gonna do, you're gonna agree on a code and we're gonna agree with the word lizard. So here's what we'll do. When we set out to write our grid that we'll use for coding purposes, the first thing I'll do is I will write the code, the special keyword, in this case, lizard, in the first few boxes, or any boxes it takes, lizard. Then after that, I'll just pick up writing the rest of the alphabet. Now, if I already have written a letter in, I don't repeat it, of course, so I'm gonna pick up with the regular alphabet, so A, well, A is already there, so here I'll put B, C is good, okay, D, D is already there, so I'll skip D and move on to E. Then would be F, then would be G, then would be H, I already have I, I'm skipping J entirely. So next would be K, I've already got L, so this is M, this is N, this is O, this is P, this is Q, this is R, but I already have R, so I'll just move on to S. This is T, this is U, this is V, this is W, that's X, and that's Y. So this is the code grid that my spy friend and I will use to code our messages. If we ever think our code's been discovered, we can just change the letter, the, the first, the keyword. Use a word, like I say, like pencil or birthday or whatever word we can think of, okay? So let, let's see just how different that makes things. You will recall that with our other code, the word balloon got coded as C, B, N, V, N, Y, S, C. Let's see how the word balloon winds up getting coded with our lizard code. So again, let me write out the letters in pairs just to make it illustrative. B, A, L, L, I'm not gonna put a double L, I'm gonna code a, an L, X. O, O, I won't put a O, O, I'll code an O, X. And N, I'm missing a letter to make that a pair, so that is what I will code. Now, this is what it looked like in our previous code previous grid. Let's see what it looks like in this grid. Well, there's B and A. In this case, B, A forms this box right here. So B becomes E. A becomes I. Here's L and there's X. So L becomes A and X becomes U. Here's O and X. So O becomes S. X becomes U. Mm, got another U there. Um, NX. Here is N and there is X. So here N becomes M. And X becomes Y. So in our new code, balloon comes out as E I A U S U M Y. So if someone had figured out that you were using this grid before, you just change it to the lizard code and you're on your way to secrecy. All right, there you go. Uh, again, I think the Playfair code's pretty slick. And with a little bit of practice, you'll be coding and decoding no time flat. Thank you very much.